Hi Year 3, welcome to this week's science lesson which is all about types of plants and parts of plants. For this lesson you'll need your exercise book, a pen, pencil and ruler and some colouring pencils or felt tips, whatever you want to use to colour in. If you want to pause the video now to go and get your equipment, please do so. Our learning objective for today is that we are learning to name and describe different types of plants. Some of the key vocabulary that we will be using in today's lesson are root, stem, trunk, leaves, flowers, nutrients, transport, sunlight and absorb. If there are any words there that you are not sure about, don't worry. As we go through the lesson today, I have highlighted them in red in some of the other slides that we are going to look at. So hopefully you will know and understand how you can use them in your writing and activities later. In front of you now, you should be able to see six pictures of six different types of plants. Have a little look at them now and decide whether you think you recognise any of these types of plants. Have you seen any of them before? Do any of them look familiar? Are there any there that you don't recognise at all? On the slides that are going to follow will be some information about each different type of plant. You may need to pause the video as you look through them to note down any information about them that you will need for the next activity. To make your notes for the next activity, you'll need to pause the video now and follow, follow the link above to be able to watch the video on types of plants. From the video, you should have found that the six different names for the different types of the plants are trees, creepers, herbs, climbers, aquatic plants and flowers. Also note that some plants are tall, some plants are short, some are weak and some grow on land and others grow in water. So for the first activity, activity one, I would like you to use the information from the video and the notes that you have made to name and explain the different types of plants. You need to include for me the name of the type of plant, the features of each type of plant and at least one example of each type of plant. You can present this information however you like, however on the next slide I've shown a few examples of how you might be able to get started if you're not quite sure. So as you can see on, sc on screen now, there are three different examples in front of you to help you get started with how to present your work. So example number one, I've written the title types of plants in the centre of the page. Around it, I've done like a spider diagram and I've started with the trees. So I've done a little picture. I have the label trees there and I've taken some of the information from my notes and from the video to start writing a few sentences about the tree. However, this isn't all the information. I've just written a few sentences to show you how to get started. In example number two, I've done like a grid. Again, I have only done three examples. You will need to do all six, but this is just an idea to get you started. Again, I've written the name of the type of plant. I've drawn a picture to go with it. And underneath in the bottom boxes, I've written the information to go with it. Then in example number three, I've done like a flow diagram. Again, I've got the picture at the top with an arrow to show the direction in which the information needs to be read. I have the label of the type of plant, the information and at the bottom an example of that type of plant. If you want to pause the video now to go and complete that activity, you can and I'll see you when you've finished. Now we know the names of some of the different types of plants. I think it's really important that you know that about all the different parts of a plant and the different jobs they do. Another name for the different jobs is the functions, so the functions of the plants. So have a think now, I'm going to give you five seconds to think about, do you know the names of any parts of a plant? Okay, keep those in your head for a minute. I'm going to bring some up on the screen for you. So there is the flower, the leaves, the stem, and the roots. For your second activity, activity two, I would like you to label the parts of a flower using the scientific words that are on your screen now. So the stem, stem, roots, leaves and flower. I'd like you to draw a flower in your exercise book. It can be as simple or as detailed as you like and you can add colour. And then once you've finished, we'll mark it together. See you in a bit. Great job, everyone. If you can now make sure you've got a coloured pen or pencil that you can mark your diagram with, have a look at the diagram on the slide in front of you now and see if your labels match up with the ones in front of you. So now we've looked at the six different types of plants and we've looked at the parts of a plant using some scientific vocabulary. What I'd like to look at now are the functions of each part of a plant. So what jobs do each part do? 
So we'll start with the roots. So the roots of a plant grow underneath a plant. They are below the surface of the soil. Roots are usually long and are covered in small hairs. And you can see on the picture there, you can see all the tiny hairs coming from the roots. So the function of the roots or the job is that they anchor the plant in the ground. To anchor something means that it holds something steady, holds something firm. They absorb water and nutrients from the soil. You'll see the words absorb and nutrients are highlighted in red. They are some of our key vocabulary. Absorb means when something soaks something up and nutrients are all the things that are good for the plant. So the roots absorb the water, they soak the water up and they take all the good parts from the soil that the plant will need. So what are the functions of the stem? So branches, leaves and flowers grow from the stem or trunk. Normally a trunk is woody and often has a layer of bark around it. Also trunks tend to be thicker than stems, stems tend to be thinner. So the function of the stem is that it holds the plant up and it also transports water and nutrients from the roots to the leaves. Now you'll notice there transports and nutrients are in red, part of our key vocabulary. Nutrients we already talked about when we were looking at the roots and the function of the roots. If something transports something, it means it carries it from one place to another. So the stem transports the water and the nutrients from the roots to the leaves. It takes the water uh, around the plant to the parts that need it, and it also takes those good things, that the nutrients it's taken from the roots around the plant as well. Looking at leaves, we know that they have many different shapes, but are mostly all green. Plants use a green colour to make food from the sunlight, which we'll look at in a moment for, at the functions. There are four main types of leaves. They're flat and wide, round, long and thin and spiky. So the function of the leaves, the important job of the leaves is that it makes food for the plant using sunlight and carbon dioxide, which is in the air. And the functions of the flower are that the flowers are brightly coloured to attract insects and birds. The insects carry pollen to other flowers and the flowers use that pollen to make seeds to grow new plants. You'll often see lots of insects and lots of, of birds at the flowers that you see that are really bright or attractive to look at. Any duller sort of flowers, you'll probably notice there won't be as many insects and birds around. So for activity three, I would like to use the information we have discussed and the information that's on the lesson slides to explain the functions of a plant. In front of you now on the slide, you can see two examples of how you might want to present your work. The first one, which you can see on my whiteboard, is a diagram of the plant. Now, this is like the one that you have done earlier. So if you want to go back to that diagram now and just add the information about the functions of each part so that you can do, or you might want to start afresh and you might want to draw a table like in my second example. You might want to write part in the first column, function at the top of the second column, and then you might want to put flower in the first part and the information about the function on the other side. And then you'll carry on until you have explained all four parts of the plant. When you've finished all your activities, activity one, two and three, if you upload them to Seesaw so I can see them and comment on them, that would be great. And I look forward to seeing all your fantastic work. To finish the lesson, I've set a little challenge for you. I wonder if anyone can find a name, one example of a non-flowering plant and a flowering plant. If you put this underneath your activity one, two and three in your exercise book as challenge work and upload it to Seesaw with the rest of your work, I'll be able to see it from there. Great job year three and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.